Hey guys, Malcolm Moore here, and today's video is gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna talk about improving your snowboarding, but I'm gonna do it without talking about technique. I'm not even gonna mention good posture once. I promise, I'll try. So we're gonna start off by talking about driving. Now driving is something that's really difficult when you start out, but it's actually a skill that you acquire, something you become a natural at really quite fast. And that is for two main reasons. The first is constant repetition, and the second is constant change. Now these might sound like two things at the opposite end of the spectrum, but hear me out. The constant repetition is the movements you're making, the turning of the steering wheel, the pushing up and down on the pedals, the changing of the shifter, if you drive a proper car that is. But there's also constant change within these movements. The timing, the intensity, the speed, the duration, it's never quite the same. And that is because of the constantly changing environment, the constantly changing world in which you drive. No two bends are ever the same. One might require a long, slow turn, one a quick turn. But it's also an unpredictable world, full of distractions, other drivers, pedestrians, and even your passengers. And having to make all these small adjustments to react to all these unpredictabilities and distractions force you to change these simple movements. And that is how you acquire the skill of driving so quickly. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring that idea into snowboarding and we're gonna really add some more distractions, some unpredictabilities and change up your environment so that you acquire the skill of snowboarding faster than ever before. So let's start off with a fun exercise to really introduce some unpredictability to within your riding. On my phone, I've downloaded a random beeper timer. There's tons of free ones on the app store, so take your pick. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna make a random noise between every two tenths of a second and every one and a half seconds. My goal is to try and make my edge change on that beep. Let me hit the start button, put it in my pocket, and it's gonna go in six seconds. Let's see if we can start on the first beep when I get my gloves on. Ah, first beep, let's go. <laughs> Woo. Nice. All right, let me just turn that off for a second. That's quite an interesting way of riding. So, shush you. You could see that obviously I got stuck over on the side of the piece because the beeps were being more common, more rapid, I should say, as I was on my heel edge. So that meant I had to turn onto my toes and I was staying on my toes side for longer, which then it meant I obviously had to adjust my turn shape. I had to go more skidded so I didn't carve off the side of the piece and it really takes you by surprise. That's the first time I actually tried that and uh, yeah, that's pretty good fun. Give that one a go. Right, let's move on to the next thing you can do. All right, another way to do the same thing without the beeper, I'm gonna follow a skier and just try and do a turn every time they make a turn. So let's pick someone. Let's get this guy over here. All right, he's a little bit ahead, but I'm gonna try and match his turns. Now, perhaps you won't even need to introduce any unpredictability into your riding. Going back to the traffic analogy, as on the road, on the slopes, we can also find heavy traffic. So get amongst it and force yourself to react to what's going on around you, what movements other people are making. It's getting busy. So next up, let's get onto introducing woo, distractions. Now, I'm not saying you should watch my YouTube videos whilst you're riding. Keep your eyes on the slope ahead, just as you keep your eyes on the road ahead whilst you're driving. But you could do something like perhaps run through your seven times table to add a little bit of distraction to make your mind work on something else. Or if you want to get a bit more adventurous, practice your juggling skills. Who knows? 
And you know what? You might even want to take it as a chance to say, plug a product. Like right now, for instance, did you know that I'm filming this on the Insta360 X3 camera? That's what allows me to get this cool invisible selfie stick look. Now I'll put a link to this camera down in the video description below, as well as a link to a video review that I did of this camera just last week. Just a thought. <laughs> All right, so this is a fun drill that introduces a lot of unpredictabilities, a lot of distractions. Simply throw your snowball between you and a mate. We're choosing to always throw it uphill when one of us is on the heels and the other one is on the toes. And what you've got to do, you've really got to watch out for each other, where each other's turning, particularly because James is goofy and I'm regular, he's turning around the other side of me. And when he throws the ball, it really throws you off balance as well. And you have to make all these adjustments to your riding to stay on your feet. Nice one, mate. And obviously, oh, you can change the rules as you do this. You could throw it on your opposite edge. You could throw it back down the hill. So let's do that now, throw it down to me. Whoa. And obviously, you'll probably find as you increase the difficulty, like we did there, you're gonna drop it as well. But give that one a go, super fun drill to do. I do it a lot, especially when I'm teaching kids. They love that one. So if we're gonna keep viewing the mountain as the open road, then make sure you get out there and you explore it. My mother-in-law, she comes out every year and she likes to do the same run over and over. She's comfortable with it. Nothing on it is gonna surprise her, but that isn't gonna help her progress very fast. So really guys, explore new runs, try different resorts. And I get it, you're not all in a position where you can do that. You might have a small local resort and you've done all the runs there. But there's still things you can do to change that run up. Make sure you're turning in different places. Put obstacles in your mind on the runs. Say for instance, right, I'm gonna make sure I have to turn around this part of the piece. But there's lots of different things you can do to explore the mountain, to change up your riding in the same place and change your environment. Next up, ride in all conditions. You know, let's say it's a whiteout and you can't really see your hand in front of your face. I know it's not the most pleasant thing to ride in, but it's really gonna improve your snowboarding. For instance, you're gonna to have to learn how to adopt a more lower reactive stance that's gonna allow you to respond to any ice or bumps in the snow and really sense that feedback that you get through from the board. And I don't just mean weather conditions, but conditions on the slopes as well. It can be easy to kind of go home a few hours before the lift shut, but try riding to the end of the day, you know, get those icy conditions on the slope and do some of those more bumpy moguled out pieces too. Really explore all conditions and you'll see a big improvement within your riding. Now, you don't necessarily need to focus on technique to improve your riding, but just doing the same thing over and over again won't get you anywhere fast. So be smart with your time on the mountain. And by doing things like this, introducing these distractions and these unpredictabilities, you really will notice you progress faster than ever. All right, I mean, I know I said I wouldn't, but good posture does help too. Maybe check that one out as well.